Hi everybody. Um, today I want to give a little rant about this supposed recovery. Uh, the leading indicators say that we're coming out of recession. Well, I doubt that very much, and I doubt that the unemployment question is uh, is going to be resolved for at least uh, another two or three years, and maybe not then. But the problem is that we keep passing burdens on to the poor and keep rewarding the rich. A recent example of this is if we were to take if we were to take the student loan program. Now the Congress passed the other day uh, on an amendment to a bill that the uh, interest rates can go from 3.4 to 6.8 percent. Now all along the town us there is no inflation. Uh, Bernanke's loans the banks at a quarter at a quarter percent. Treasuries are under two percent on 10-year 10-year bonds. It's incredibly that uh, people have enough confidence to buy 10 and 30-year bonds with 2% interest, uh, thinking that there is there's not going to be any inflation. We are headed towards a lot of inflation, and we have inflation now. <clears throat> but thanks to the things that they count in inflation, and they don't count in, in and the things that they exclude from this, makes it look like we are we are uh, uh, in danger of stagflation rather than inflation. But uh, the student loan thing is unbelievable. That through an act of Congress, and why in the world anybody in Congress would vote for this uh, is beyond me. Either they don't know it's in there, or they're being paid off by the banks and the learning institutions. What happens is, if you have a $40,000 loan over a 20-year period, the difference between 3.4% and 6.8% adds an additional $20,000 to that loan. And you know what that $20,000, where that goes? That goes to the 1%. That doesn't go to buying a house, or buying a refrigerator, or buying a new car, or buying anything. All that does is ruin your credit for further and further out over the horizon. The problem now is kids coming out of college, they owe so much money that it is, it is a debt that everyone knows uh, cannot be relieved by bankruptcy or anything else. And if any place you have a job where you register your social security number, they can come and... and uh, take money out of your out of your paycheck every week to pay that debt. But what happens is you go to apply f you when we talked about this before, but you go to apply for a loan for a car and they see you have the student debt. So normally when you might be able to get the loan for that car, you don't get it. So we don't sell another car. Same thing goes, you go to rent. You 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 need the money down for the first month, you need the security and you need the money for the last month's rent. Well you can't save that much money and then when they look when they look at your meager income because of what they've done to wages with the freaking Republicans and what the what the president has allowed them to do to wages, you know, you can't ever accumulate that much money or you have a hard time doing it. You have to live in your parents' basement for years instead of for months to accumulate this kind of this kind of wealth. And the whole time you're paying off this debt. So a lot of places they won't even rent to you because you have this debt over your head. Don't try to even think about getting a mortgage for your house. They advertise, oh mortgages well, record low, three point seven five percent, two point nine seven I've even seen percent mortgages. Well who just ask them who the hell's getting any one of those loans? What are you doing? You're, you're maybe giving it to the president of the bank. You're giving him a loan at that interest. But wh where are these loans? They don't exist. Plus, we're having more and more foreclosures because of all the illegal, the illegal shenanigans the banks did on these, on trying to come up with the original papers for your loan, which were sold and resold and sold again. That uh, it was in, in many cases almost impossible for them to find them, so they forged them. Well. That alone prevent you know put off many. There's somebody trying to Skype, which is nice. I put off many and many um, uh, a household from being foreclosed on, so they're in the, they're in the homes and and they're eventually going to get tossed. Uh, so we're, we're in a, a terrible economic situation. But when when they they talk about core inflation, they leave out the price of fuel and the price of food. And anybody that goes shopping knows you can't do either. You got to put gas in the tank to get to the shop, to the shopping. <laughs> this guy, it's funny. I hardly ever get to Skype, and and now this guy's calling me. Uh, but it's it's funny because uh, 
you can't go to you can't go to to shop because you can't afford the gas. And if you do afford the gas to go shopping, you spent your money on gas. You can't buy the food. Now it's 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 horrendous the price of food and how that's going up. And that's going up basically because of wherever you live, uh, a lot of places produce nothing at all in the winter and all that stuff has to be trucked in and in order to truck it in you have to pay the additional cost of freight uh, because of the price of gas and then the, the the Republicans are throwing this red herring out that it's just that this pipeline if this pipeline goes through it'll help us ease the pressure on on our imported fuels well not a drop of that we've gone over this before not a drop of that of that uh, will ever be used in this country. They're going to pipe it down to Houston and then they're going to ship it overseas and the people in Houston will make billions of dollars refining it and the people that ship it will make billions of dollars. The pipeline will pay the United States government not one damn cent. It'll pay, it won't pay won't pay the states one damn cent and it won't pay any taxes because all the sales made by the refineries will be considered international because all the stuff is shipped overseas. So we get to the entire burden of the of of the environmental damage that could take place, and the stuff gets shipped to Europe. Now, if we don't allow the pipeline, then then they're going to uh, have a pipeline that goes through British Columbia and goes to Vancouver, and then they'll sell to the to the Chinese. Well, regardless of whether they're selling to the Chinese, and this is a this is a diesel-based fuel. Uh, I mean, a fuel that's that's the the constituency of the fuel itself is applicable to diesel engines. Uh, so they'll ship it to China or they'll ship it to Europe. Either way you look at it, it doesn't add or detract one drop of oil from, from world usage. So this, by not letting them ship to Europe, by making them ship to China instead, doesn't take, doesn't, doesn't affect how much, how much oil is shipped in the world. So it won't have any bearing on the price on the price of a barrel of oil, but what it will have bearing on are all the the farms and ranches and creeks and rivers that this that this pipeline goes through, and what are they going to get for it? They'll get nothing because of eminent domain. They will be paid a minimum amount, and this will not create jobs because once the pipeline is up, look at the Alaskan pipeline. Once the pipeline's up, you have a, a crew that runs up and down and fixes fixes it and that's it small crew and these people are super specialists that make these pipelines they they're, they're not going to come through your your neighborhood and say oh Joe Schmo grab a grab a, a welder and come on out and help us build this pipeline these are specialists they're all imported specialists so these people go all over the world and build these pipelines so it's not creating any lasting jobs either but these are all the red herrings and these are all the things that are keeping the little man down. In the past 10 years the only thing to increase more than medical costs and as a percentage of inflation has been has been student tuitions. But yet they can pay they can pay coaches and basketball teams three million dollars to coach a basketball team. How many people's tuition did that take to pay him? And how many years are those kids to pay this this coach? How many years are those kids going to be in debt? And it's that's the debt that kills the recovery, because these are people that a couple of years out of college that they should be having decent jobs and they should they should be buying homes. And that's what's the only thing that's going to boost this recovery is when home construction starts up again and starts up on a decent scale, because then. Well, with the house, you sell all the products that go into a house, plus you sell them refrigerators, rugs, you sell, you sell a plethora of things that create uh, jobs in the economy. And, and uh, what doesn't create jobs are these people, these bankers, and, and these people that, that, that play with paper silver and play with paper other commodities with no commodities really behind them. That's the people that are making the real money in this economy. Well, everybody else isn't is having their health care dropped, or they're or they're they're working for minimum wage, and and you'll never get out of debt that way, and we'll never see a recovery until the middle class begins to to get back to decent wages and get gets back to health coverage uh, paid for by their employer. So we're in for a long, long haul. 
and the only hope for us silver bugs is that when this when this is realized by everybody then they're going to switch they're going to they're going to want to hold something to protect themselves against the collapse of the dollar because there's going to be trillions of dollars once they start trading internationally for commodity for some commodity other than dollars whether it's gold whether it's silver or whether it's yen or, or whatever whatever currency the Chinese decide to call theirs um, there's going to be trillions of dollars on the open market and everybody's going to want to get out of dollars so when they when that happens I hope you have silver but if it doesn't happen then I hope that uh, there's enough pressure on Congress to to reverse this uh, because students coming out coming out can't pay what they normally pay on a mortgage for a house they now have to pay on the mortgage uh, for their education and they're coming out and a lot of them don't even don't even find jobs when they do get out and this mortgage on this education exceeds a trillion dollars and that is going to hold us back even if we start to have a recovery say we have a two percent recovery without that we might have had a four or five percent recovery and that money has a tendency to recycle itself over and over and over again whereas money that goes to the bankers doesn't recycle itself at all so the elite one percent are doing fine the rest of us are getting screwed